Hi and welcome to the Financial Fox Mining and Metal Specials. In this episode, we are going to talk about one of the most exciting metals today, which is lithium, that remains popular on the back of the booming market for lithium ion batteries, which are used in electric vehicles and other devices. Now, also, we have to consider that energy storage and sustainability is one of the bigger concerns of this century. So, we see government, they are getting on board with encouraging regulation, they are utilizing in batteries to reduce pollution. Regarding the market, analysts are uh, pretty optimistic and also they are forecasting that demand for lithium should triple by 2025 and growing at a stable annual rate of 21%, with a market that remains tight tight for years. Now, I mean, these are quite bullish uh, forecasts. I mean, but is that true? So we wanted to talk to one of the best known international mining experts, Miki Folp, known as the merc mercenary geologist. Miki is joining us directly from Vancouver. Miki, lithium popularity is mainly due to uh, being one of the primary metals used in most modern batteries, which are vital element for future of energy and storage. Can you maybe explain a bit more about what makes lithium preferable over other metals? Well, it's uh, energy efficient, so it, lithium ion batteries are about the best we have for uh, the energy that goes in versus the energy that comes out. Uh, you know, it's not determined at this point that lithium ion batteries are going to be the future for electric vehicles, but certainly uh, the small battery industry, power tools, electronics, your computer, your phone, uh, certainly the technology that uh, is favored for the future would be lithium ion batteries. But what about cobalt? Well, cobalt is actually a larger constituent of lithium ion batteries than lithium is, and so is graphite. Uh, but cobalt, uh, you know, the problem with cobalt, there are no good deposits anywhere in the world other than the DRC. Yeah. Uh, and that's uh, filled with geopolitical risk. And cobalt is supplied almost universally as a byproduct from nickel and copper smelting. So the supply demand fundamentals really of cobalt are much more in question than lithium. We got plenty of lithium. The, the uh, cartel, the oligopoly cartel, whatever you want to call it, has about 300 years of reserves at current production levels, current demand levels. So there certainly is no shortage of lithium in the world. So picking up of this, I mean, one of the problems usually discussed is that uh, supply and demand. Uh, you think that can lithium supply keep up with the growing demand we mentioned earlier? Oh, absolutely. There's an oversupply of lithium. You know, really, I don't get this whole lithium story. It's, uh, you know, the last couple of years, there's been production uh, worldwide that's much exceeded demand. The, the majors are geared up, the oligopoly. Right now, they have 91,000 tons of capacity worldwide, and the world used 47 million, uh, or, excuse me, 91,000 tons, and the world used 47,000 tons last year. So we have an overbill, we have overcapacity of lithium, uh, and that explains why the price cratered last year. The price uh, lost 60% over the course of the last year. Uh, from, uh, uh, I can't exactly remember my numbers, let me look at my notes here, went from uh, $21,000 a ton to twelve thousand dollars a ton, sixty percent loss in in value per ton. But that is not negative things. Well, I, you know, I'm not I'm not bullish on lithium. I, I've lived through one lithium bubble already. It, it was the same time as the big rare earth bubble from two thousand nine till two thousand eleven, and lithium cratered then and. And we've seen the prices crater now. So these projections of electric vehicles, I think, are, are way optimistic, way overblown. You know, the world of all the 
uh, world. 96 million cars built last year, and uh, uh, just a little bit more than 1% of those were uh, electric vehicles, so uh, uh, outside of China. So the demand outside of China uh, is not meeting projections. Uh, so to me, it's really a Chinese story, not a worldwide story. But also, I mean, we see some governments uh, also in the U.S. and elsewhere in the West, they are very encouraging in regulation to utilize batteries to reduce pollution uh, and also uh, adoption in, in other industries. So uh, it might not be just a Chinese story. Well, I, I still maintain that electric vehicles are a Chinese story. Um, you know, the world produced 900,000 electric vehicles outside of China last year. You know, the um, the attitude in the United States with, uh, you know, we're now the largest oil producer and, and you know, I don't know anybody that owns an electric vehicle. I don't know anybody in, intending to buy an electric vehicle in, in the near future. So it may be a story that's going to happen in the in the United States uh, you know, within a decade or so, but I don't think it's going to happen any anytime soon. We like our big SUVs and our big uh, F-350 pickups and <laughs> gas, is, gas is cheap and I don't think that's going to change. Uh, the Trump administration has removed subsidies, uh, is removing subsidies uh, for electric vehicles and really that's the dem driving demand in China is the subsidies for electric vehicles. So, um, you know, I just, uh, all in all, I think the whole story, I've seen this, you know, I've got lots of years in this business. I'm a commodities talking head. Uh, and I've looked at lots of specialty metals over the years. And it just seems that analysts that reject these demands are consistently wrong. It's really hard to predict the man going five years out, let alone a decade or two decades. And I think, personally, I think the whole lithium story is way overblown. And so far that's been true. Uh, you know, we use 50, a little bit more than 50% of the worldwide capacity last year. And you've got these, you know, three major chemical companies in the world uh, two lists on New York Stock Exchange, one available, you can buy SDRs, uh, SQM in Chile, and two Chinese companies who have entered the market in a big way over the last two or three years. Uh, uh, but uh, by producing uh, or processing spodumene from Australia, you know, the real increase in supply over the last couple of years come solely from Australia with hard rock lithium spodumene, which is then shipped to China and converted either to lithium carbonate or lithium hydroxide. Uh, the other part of the story are the three majors, SQM, uh, the FMC spin out called Livent and, uh, uh, and Albemarle, and they are mainly brine players in Argentina and Chile. Okay, so talking uh, talking again about the prices, we saw obviously they, they've been decreasing, but uh, this is not seen as a worry by many analysts, which, you know, we said they are still quite optimi optimistic, saying that this will be the year of transaction for the lithium market because it means it's more accessible. And, uh, you know, 2020 and 2021 could, be, could actually give lithium a chance for a real growth, uh, you know, in, in the industry. Do you think we have already reached the peak, you know, in 2017, 2018, and basically this story is already gone, or you think there will be the opportunity for growing, for further development in the next couple of years? Well, I certainly think that demand for lithium is going to grow, but, I, but personally, I think it's going to be uh, driven mainly by small batteries and aforementioned power tools and electronics, uh, Everything we use now has uh, is small tools. Uh, our electronics all have small lithium ion batteries. So I think that's where the growth is really gonna be. Uh, and I have no idea what's gonna happen in 20, 
2020-2021 to the lithium market. I expect it to continue to grow. Whether it will be a turning point, I, I think is equivocal. Uh, and it's based really on this very strong projection of demand for electric vehicles, which I strongly think is not going to occur yeah. nearly as fast as a part as of uh, say you know what you got to watch out for yeah a part of batteries uh, um what else can lithium be used for well it's used for people that uh, have mental problems to kind of mellow them out uh it's used in uh, uh ceramics and glass in fact that constitutes about one-fifth more than one fifth of the demand is spodumene for use in ceramics and glass, and that, uh, but that cannot be supplied by the brine market, which is the major producers in the world. Or brine plays in Australia and Chile, and to a small extent in Nevada. Uh, uh, lubricating greases, polymers, catalysts, mm. uh, and the aforementioned uh, batteries, which uh, last year constitute about a little bit more than half a use uh, of its use and and ceramics and glass uh, and I would submit that the real growth is going to be in small batteries going forward. Okay, uh, do, do you maybe want to share with us the views and the trends around investment in lithium project in America and Canada? Uh, I think the only juniors that will succeed uh, and most of those are based in either Toronto, Van Vancouver, wherever their projects are. Uh, there's lots of projects in Nevada. There's hard rock projects in Quebec, uh, hard rock projects certainly in Australia coming on board. But for the junior industry uh, based in North America, the only prayer I think you have is if you have a brine play in Argentina or Chile, that the cartel wants wants to keep uh, competition off the market. So if you have a good brine play in Argentina or Chile uh, and can attract one of the three major companies or uh, outside of China or even the Chinese to buy into those, that's how you can be successful and probably uh, not, not otherwise. You know, okay, uh, so, so talking about those projects, is there any specific uh, company that you would like to mention? Uh, I don't, follow, I don't uh, tend to play in lithium space because I didn't get in early in the first bubble and, uh, and I saw the way how quickly that bubble went up and went down. We've seen a falling price, so uh, personally I don't play in lithium space. Uh, my commodities of interest right now uh, this year are gold, copper, and uranium. Do you think the price is going to, you know, it can get lower? I mean, how does China lower VAT reflect on its prices on a global level? Uh, I, I don't, I'll be honest with you, Stefania. I don't follow this market closely enough to be able to predict prices. And I certainly do not follow what Chinese are doing with uh, the bat the value added taxes. Uh, well, here's one thing we always know is that the Chinese will do what's good for Chinese uh, industry and the worst, rest of the world be damned. And we've seen that with lots of World Trade Organization uh, movements against China over the last few years. Okay, okay, so we understood about your position. Um, what, what I wanted to also talk about is obviously the growing the lithium ion battery production has also spurred the market for other secondary minerals such as graphite and some other precious metal like palladium. How this shift towards uh, battery power vehicles expected to affect the precious metals market? Well, uh, it's certainly if the electric vehicle market uh, makes great inroads, it will uh, certainly decrease the demand for palladium. If if the elect uh, the internal combustion gasoline powered small vehicle market starts to go downhill, uh, I would probably think that that portion of the market may lose market share, but we will continue to build more and more small vehicles, passenger cars, uh, 
um, trucks, et cetera, small trucks. Um, so from that point of view, I don't think it will affect either the platinum or palladium markets. Those are small markets. We have an oversupply of palladium right now. We have a supply Excuse me, I said that wrong. We have an oversupply of platinum. We have a suppl uh, supply deficit in palladium. That's why the price has gone so high over the last, uh, over the last year. Uh, graphite is still, it, it is the major component in lithium ion batteries in terms of tonnage use. Uh, use. But uh, as of now, that market is still supplied by synthetic graphite. Natural graphite makes very little sense right now in the small battery market. Okay, Miki, so we know where you stand with lithium. Now, I know we have already planned to do an, uh, another interview and uh, discuss uh, uh, more about uranium, which uh, uh, will be probably the next uh, giant, the next metal to look at. Uh, do you want maybe to share some of your views? I mean, that should be a pretty, a pretty exciting story, you know, the move of uranium finally. Well, and you said finally, and that's the key to it. None of us know when it's going to happen, but we've seen it happen again. Uh, uh, we've seen it happen in the past. We expect it to happen again. Uh, so I am bullish in ore uranium in the medium to long term. Once again, it's very difficult to predict the short term of uranium, but rest assured, uranium, I look forward to talking to you again about that subject. That's great. That's great. The last things, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm very bullish on uranium as well, but, you know, some analysts, uh, they obviously said the tipping point uh, was 2018, then they moved it to 2019. At the same time, we saw the oil price going up. Uh, so so do, you, do you think the oil price going up, it basically slowed down, let's say, the, um, uh, the turn of the uranium market? It, or do you think that is not related? Well, right now at, at $26 uranium on the spot price, and we saw the spot price uh, hang around $29 for most of the last six months or so. Uh, that's not going to mo motivate anybody in the uranium mining business. Uh, there's not a uranium mine in the world uh, that makes very much money if even uh, makes any money at all at $26 uranium. So we need a much higher price. You know, we've got this uh, Section 232 uh, decision that's uh, recommendations that came to President Trump uh, last week. So the next 90, let's say the next quarter, by the end of the next quarter, we should have uh, a much better view of what uranium price is going to do in the short term. Okay, Miki, thank you very much, and I look forward to discussing with you more about uh, the, the uranium market and, you know, how is, um, how is going to happen, timeline, and also your favorite project as well. Uh, thank you very much for being on our show. Thank you very much, Stefania, and I look forward to talking to you once again. Thanks. This is everything from the Financial Fox. I see you all next time.